Okay, so let's actually do something with this. I'm going to stay with the sphere. But I'm just going to delete all of this. Build, and it'll go back to coming in and going out, just as we talked about before. So let's once more get the point positions. Now, if I hit tab, you can see that get point position is in my list of recent compounds. I can grab that and it's, that's just a nice, easy way to do it. What I want to do is I want to remap the Y position of these coordinates. So right now, this data is a float three. It is three floats, one for X, one for Y, one for Z. I need to split that up. So here's a new node. If I come down here, hit tab and Something you can do with the node list is you can type in the first letter of each. Once you get to know the compounds, obviously, you can type in the letter, the first letter of each word in the compound name. So if I go VTS, I can get vector to scalar, which is what I want. And this is a vector three to scalar. So we'll hit that. So what this is literally doing is taking the data coming in and splitting it into its components for me. I know this is a vector three because I can hover on this and math flow three, right? Math float three, vector three, same deal. Float, it's made of floats. Three, there are three of them. Now I have the separate components of this data and I can start to do things with them. What I want to do is remap the Y. Why do I want to remap the Y? What am I remapping the Y to? Well, let's find out. It's time for some new compounds. What I want to do is get the bounds of this array and the bounds of an array will give you the minimum value and maximum value of the array. So let's do that. Tab again, array bounds. And this is going to give you the minimum and the maximum value of the array. So this is the range of Y data that's coming in from the point position. I would suggest that if we turn the grid back on really quickly and go to an orthographic view, yeah, it looks like it's roughly minus 10 to 10, which makes sense. It's a sphere of radius 10, which is cool. What I want to do is change the range of that data. So that's coincidentally the name of the node. So I'm going to take the Y out again. I'm going to change the range of the data coming from Y. I need the start bound, that is what it is now, and the end bound, which is what it is now too. So that is just these. So this is the lowest in the array, the minimum bound. This is the highest in the array, the maximum bound. And then I can remap that data to whatever I like. So if I say, go from here to here to zero and, oh, I don't know, 10. The data coming in, and you can see the data coming in. You can certainly see the bounds by using our friend, the watch point, which will not show us anything right now because this piece of graph is not being evaluated because it's not connected to anything. You need to connect your graph to an output or other nodes that'll be coming up as we go through to see the data. Right now, this data is not being evaluated and in Bifrost, we just say it's not being pulled on. The data isn't being pulled. When the data is not pulled, it doesn't exist. This makes it fast. This is a good thing. You just need to remember to connect it to say an output. Now, we've got an error here. Now. For some reason, it, it kind of wants me to output this to a float. So why don't I just take that and pop it down there. And just delete that one. The problem was is that I was trying to plug an, an array of floats into a float port. This happens. Easiest way is just to learn to read the error messages. I'll show you that again if I plug that in there. So you can see that the error message says, no promotion exists from a value of type array float to a value of type float. And what that's saying is that there's an array here coming in to a port that is a float. The way to fix it, put it in a new port or right click on the output and change the port type. So this looks just like the pop-up we saw before for the value node. All I really need to do is say, okay, you're a float. We know that, make you an array, go okay. And now it's fine, now it's working. And with the watch point, we can see the data. So the data coming in, if I just move that, the data coming in, the minimum is minus 10, the maximum is 10. The data coming out, minimum is zero, maximum is 10. And if I change this to five or something fancier, minus five, five, you can see the data change as we do that. So 
This is literally remapping the values in this array to whatever you set them here. What we're going to do is we're going to displace the points in the sphere with this remap data that we've that we've set up. So this is really similar to what we were doing before, just adding positions to positions. But in this case, what I want to do is displace the points of the sphere based on the Y position. So I'm going to put down a displace points. What this compound does is it displaces the points in a mesh with this amount of weight along that vector. Now, if there's nothing connected to that vector, it will use the normals on the object. If there is no normals on the object, nothing will happen. So you need to make sure that the object has normals. Anything you bring in from Maya will have normals by default. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Y data that I've got here, and I'm going to displace those points with it by plugging it into the weights. And you can see what happens. It's jumped up and starting to flatten. So if I take this guy and I can like move where it starts and I can move where it ends and it is displacing those points based on our remapped data, which is cool, but doesn't look all that good to start with. So let's introduce modulation of the data. I'm just going to get rid of this port because we don't need it anymore. I have a handy, handy compound here called Evaluate F curve. This is the ability to modulate data with a curve. If you've ever used Photoshop, the curves plugin, uh, the curves filter works like this. Various other DCCs also have this. It's just a way to modulate the data. So let's connect this to this this noodle here, this connection here. I can do that by holding down Alt on my keyboard and dragging it. You can see that the noodle gets highlighted. Once I let go, it's going to say, what would you like to plug it into on this side? I'll say the X. So right now, if we just pop out our curve, here's our curve that we're working on. It's displacing pretty much what, what goes in is what comes out. So zero goes in, zero comes out. One goes in, one comes out. Perfect. You have some preset curves, so I can change that if, you, if I want to. It's not going to show much just yet, but let's let's do something that's that's visible now. You can also change the curve. So if I take this back to oh, just a flat one, just say look, you know what I want. What I want to do is like take point point two here, which you can see I can set here. 0 0.3, 0 0.2, all that's great. And if I take this guy, we'll drop him down to say 0 0.4. See that it shrunk a little bit, which is great. Then I'm going to change my extrapolation to oscillate. And you see what's happened here is that it's just repeating forever before and after. So you're probably wondering why nothing's happening. If I change, work on my change range here, so right now what's coming into this is minus 10 to 10, and what's going out is 0 to 1. Let's just try pushing up the end, so changing what's coming out. And you can see that it's starting to displace my object along the y-axis, which is what we want. To make that a little bit more uh, visible, I'm just going to push the scale up here. And that will just scale the displacement effect. We can also change our curve so that this is a Bezier, and this is a Bezier as well. And this allows us to change the shape. If I pull out this a little bit, you can see the shape change. And this a little bit as well. You should be able to see the shape change. There we go. And again, we can look at our graph. Let's just pop that out. See it better. Our graph is oscillating forever and ever and ever. So there we go. Very simple displacement based on the Y position of the point. And what we've done is we've taken our positions, remapped our Y coordinate, plugged that into a modulating curve, so we're modulating the values, and then use that to displace the points. 
you can change that curve to whatever you like and you get a different result. So if I take the point in the middle here, move it like that, or like over to here, you're going to get all kinds of interesting stuff going on. You can also completely just reset the curve. So I can just go back to this guy or probably what's a little better is this one. You're getting different results there because of the modulation. I can change this. I can put a lump in the middle. I can, and, and again, I can come back to my change range and just change the frequency of the displacement by changing the end position. I feel like I'm making some kind of vase here, maybe. You can change how that reacts and how that works. So yeah, that is the, the first simple lesson. And as I was saying before, once more, if I take our original sphere and plug that in, you can see non-destructive. That sphere still exists. It's still having stuff done on it inside Bifrost and out. So yeah, that's a really basic displacement. And just to show you how procedural this is, if I go into Maya and just create myself a cone, there's a polygon cone. I'm going to go into its channel box and I'm because I'm going to be displacing this, I'm going to give it some more subdivision. So let's for now, we'll hide the Bifrost just for a second. There's our tiny, tiny cone. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Start with polycone, radius five, height ten, there's a cone. We'll give it some subdivisions there, but mainly we'll give it some subdivisions here. So that we've just got something to, to actually displace. Right, we'll set both of those to 30. That's great. And it's the same as before. I'm going to close down my channel box. First thing I'm going to do is hide my cone. It's a good habit to get into. And I'm going to drag, middle click, drag, drop it into Bifrost. And you can see. Here's our input node. This is our input icon. Now, <coughs> if I output this, right, I'm not going to see anything because Bifrost is hidden, so we'll hide that. There we go. There's our cone. Just undo that for a second. And all the way back to here, we'll unhide the Bifrost. So what I what I can do is I can replace these two connections with this one. And the fastest way to replace these two connections, and it's a good habit to get into when you're building compound networks, is put down a pass node like that, hold down Alt, click and drag, and the pass will pick up, and then hold down Alt, click and drag, and you've got the ability to plug something coming in to two things going out. So if I just change that to the cone, you can see that the, it's now the cone that's being displaced. I mean, it's quite heavy displacement, but you get the idea that I promise that's the cone and I can use it to make all kinds of interesting shapes. If I take my F curve back to what it was like that, that's just displacing the cone based on the Y positions. So yeah, non-destructive and procedural. So let's just do some undos. So we get back to that. I can swap from my sphere to my cone. And it's not a problem. And again, both of these objects are not destroyed in any way.